In this video, I will outline reading systems documentation and prophecy in Rabbisaker. An activity is an action performed either by an internal or an external entity. Examples could be on data or on operations. On data, sending data, transforming data, filing them, storing them, retrieving data from storage or receiving data examples. On the operation side, picking goods in a warehouse, inspecting goods at a receiving dock or counting cash are examples. For each activity, there must be an underlying entity that performs the activity. As we circle each activity, we put a box around the entity that performs the activity. Data flow diagram graphically represents a data flow due to activities undertaken in a system. There are different data flow diagrams. The two main types are physical data flow diagram and logical data flow diagram. Physical data flow diagram graphically represents in and out of data between internal and external entity. It shows who and what. Logical data flow diagrams shows activities in the system performing without having specifying how, where, or by whom the activities are performed or accomplished. Logical data flows have some advantages over physical data flows. What a system is doing will change less over time than how the system is doing. An example of a logical analysis is where an accounting system receives cash from customers and customers' accounts get updated. Physical analysis is cash is received by check or electronic funds. It's recorded manually or electronically. The ways can change with time. In system analysis and design diagrams presented by Yodan and Code shows the process as a circle, but information systems diagrams presented by Gain and Sarsen shows the process as a square with curved edges. The data flow diagrams use symbols, document, manual key, punch card, data flow connectors, logical flows, data disk, general purpose, input output, start of activities and end of activities, the process or system, manual process, decision point, entity and data store. Each of these have different symbols and these symbols are used in data flow diagrams. There are different levels of details in data flow diagrams and the top level of the details or the most condensed level of detail is called the context diagram. In the context diagram, there are external entities and the entity in focus is the information system which is shown as a circle like a process. So what is shown 
is the interaction or the data flow between the entity and the external entities. It's the information system in focus and the external entities. In this example, there's entity and customer. There's selling goods to the customer and receiving cash. And then there is the entity information system and the supplier. And in that, there's buying goods and paying cash. The same context level diagram can be looked at as a logical flow and a physical flow. If it is a logical flow, our focus here is what is it? It's about activity description, just like we did it. It's the entity or the information system, then the customer and suppliers are the external entities. Activities are described as receiving cash, selling goods, paying cash, and buying goods. But when it comes to physical flow diagram, the focus is about who does what. So here, the customer and the entity, the receivables clerk, receives cash and the salesperson sells the goods, the payable clerk pays cash to the supplier and the, the storekeeper receives the good from the supplier. So the levels of de details differ depending on the flowchart diagram. The context diagram is the highest level diagram. That's only one process or activity, or it's the entire information system. And in our example, there were two external entities. The next level of detail is called the level zero diagram. The single process or the information system in the context diagram is now detailed into manageable processes. And two entities that we had and a data store. In level one diagram, which is the next level of detail, we take each process that we identified in the level zero diagram and each process is now detailed out into uh, more detailed or more manageable processes from the level zero level uh, process. So we can do that for each process that we identified in level zero diagram. And we can go on to level one, level two, level three and so forth until such time each process is then broken down and each sub process or sub sub process is broken down into details where there is no more details to be broken down so that is that state is called the pseudo code So an example of levels of de uh, details differ depending on the flow chart diagram. If we take an accounting system, we can take that as the context level diagram and the process there or the accounting system is then given a number one, 1.0. And in that accounting system, there are a number of processes. And the process that we are now looking at is one, a single process, which is the sales process. So this is the level zero details, but because we are now giving numbers to each, each, um, each analysis, the next level is level is, is two. So therefore we identify the process here, sales process, and we can identify into more manageable processes as customer order. We give 2.0.1 and supplier tracking number 
which is 2.0.2 and then if you go to the next level which is level 1 diagram or the customer we can look at one of the processes that we identified under sales in the level 0 diagram here we are taking customer order customer order can be now looked at in more details in more manageable processes as checking with the supplier uh, check with the supplier tracking number for delivery so we give a number as 2.0.1.1 and send confirmation to accounts department to raise invoice 2.0.1.2 so as we go into different levels higher levels then we provide more details but when we are providing more details we focus on the processes sub processes and sub sub processes